Okay, so we've got the RE2 running a movie file uh, out of the box within 30 seconds or so. Um, and show you how easy it is, but the RE2 is far more capable than that. Let me show you some of the things she can do and how flexible she can be. Um, we had it attached to a 5.7 inch quarter VGA LCD. If I now disconnect the LCD, um, the connection, as I said before, is our blue chip interface. <coughs> and what we're going to do is get it to talk to this rather larger LCD um, through a HDMI link. Uh, it's a 22 inch LCD with a resolution of 1368 by 768. Okay. Before I do that, what I need to do is to plug in the USB uh, link to my PC. And that's plugged into the USB device port, as you can see there. On the utility connector, and we've powered the RE2 off so far, remember that I had a connector and I identified before with a little black sleeve on the leg. And I said that was the engineering uh, port. If I now take this rather expensive tool that we had custom made for blue chip, uh, otherwise known as a paper clip, and I short out those two pins, always easier than it seems, like so, so that when I power the board on, the RE2 can see that the pin um, is connected to ground. One of the pins on that connector is ground, the other one's the active signal, and then it'll go into its engineering mode, and rather than boot the operating system, it'll actually go into its own setup utility. On the laptop, I'm running uh, the RE2 configurator, so once I power it up, I'll be able to take control of that, and you'll see the uh, configurator on your screen. <coughs> okay, so we switch it on. And you might have just seen the little LED flash, and then we take it out, and you should now see the little LED flashing happily away in the corner there, roughly every second or so. If we'd have left the link on for about 30 seconds, then the RE2 has cleared itself down to its manufacturing defaults. So if ever you do anything and you want to get it back to the way it was supplied to you, uh, that's one of the ways of doing it. Okay, so if I now plug in the HDMI cable, which goes over to this monitor, like so, and I go into the engineering configurator, and I choose... DVI automatic, and what it'll do, the RE2 will actually then identify with this display and through the EDID port discover what the settings are. There you go, you can see it came up on the screen there. And I can now save that setting like so. And then go over into the splash screen utility. So the splash screen is what you see when the board powers up the first time. So if I now pick an image, like so, and then I tell it the utility to resize it, you'll see on the screen that it's copying, and then right into the flash, and then you'll see that it's actually filled the screen with it. Okay. If I now go back into the display configuration, you'll see now that the selected LCD is set as DVI automatic, and you get an idea of how many options there are. Now these are the standard options that we already support. Um, if I decide to manually pick 1360 by 768 and then test that and then save it and then go over to the splash screen. Again I can load an image. Let's be different this time. Um, there you go. And if we now upgrade, upload that to the screen and then write it into the flash. You'll see it pop up on the screen there. Wire Kingfisher, it's Blue Chip's uh, logo, and this one looks a little bit more natural than the one that sometimes we pick. Um, it gives you an idea just how easy it is, not just to reconfigure the RE2 for a given di uh, display, but also if you think in terms of the products uh, that you might choose to use with it, you're buying one board and you're able to configure it yourselves for a multitude of different LCDs. As you'll see a little bit later, we'll do it for a 3.5 inch or a 4.3 or a 7 inch or whatever, so the options are really quite wide. If I now take you back to the operating system settings, which is the top level 
um, page on the configurator, you'll see that we've got the ability to switch on and off a variety of peripherals. Uh, the first one at the top, anybody who's been involved in developing uh, with Windows CE will know that COM2 is used as the deeper port uh, typically. So we can enable or disable that actually in this utility. We don't have to change the operating system to do that. And equally for the touchscreen, for the USB device, for the hosts, for the Ethernet, for the SD card, splash screen, audio, and what we call the CM1, uh, which is one of our communication modules, we can enable or disable them here. We don't have to create a different Windows CE image to do that. So the benefits for you are that you only use the one image and you're able to configure it themselves to meet your unique requirements. For example, if you wanted to lock out the Ethernet to stop people getting access to the web or whatever, you can control that yourself. You don't have to have separate images for all these things. Equally, because the splash screen is so simple to use, you can choose by straightforward uh, JPEG images what kind of product ID you want for your devices for each type of product you have. In the old days, it used to be quite difficult to get a splash screen to come up um, on a one-by-one -one basis. Nowadays, it's extremely easy, and it's literally just down to how you want to process it when you put it in your product. Okay. Uh, so we've done the splash screen. We've done the display configuration. The only one I haven't done in there, which I'll just touch on briefly, is that we also have a custom setting, uh, which is down the bottom. And here... Uh, you can actually set up what resolution in terms of horizontal and vertical you require and also the exact video timing, so back porch, front porch, sync widths, um, polarities, all that kind of stuff are through here. You can actually set up your clock frequencies, etc. Um, the beauty of that is if you're driving LED displays or something that's not using a standard um, resolution, you're in total control and the RE2 is quite unique in this capability. Um, but for the moment, if I just put it back to 1360 by 768, and I didn't actually change it before, but we'll make sure. Finally, on the right hand side, we've got the ability to change the bootloader. So Bluechip can provide a bootloader file for you, and you can make sure you've got the latest just by pressing the button and equally the operating system. So we give you all the tools to manage the board on your own. Finally on the top here you'll see that it's telling you what the bootloader revision is, what the serial number of the board is, what the MAC address is, uh, where we're booting from, resolution and the current CPU speed uh, which takes us up to the top right hand corner here on the first page which where we've got a setting where we can ask the RE2 to manage its own power so we can clock itself up or down depending on the load it sees. Um, it's already an extremely uh, low power device um, but that ability also enables it to cut down the power consumption even more if you find that a lot of the time with your product or application you're not actually using uh, the full or require the full bandwidth of the device. Or you can manually set it. Um, fortunately we've blocked it such that you can't actually clock it up um, but you get an idea of the settings on the screen. For those of you who have been challenged before when you're setting up an Ethernet device on a network, especially with a small uh, board such as this, you can see that we give you the ability to set, up it up, set it up as a DHCP or you can set fixed IP addresses. Um, going further down on the graphics side, you can set up what the graphics display colour depth will be. Uh, we've set it to its highest at 32 and we can also then decide what display rotation we need. There are limits in terms of what it can do in terms of the rotation and there may be a hit on the performance, a slight hit on the performance, uh, but as I'll show you later it's still extremely capable. Uh, you can also switch in on, on and off the cursor. Uh, we were asked so many times about this, how you actually could change the register settings or registry settings or whatever to do that. Uh, we've actually put it now as a, uh, an item that we pass into the operating system. So if you don't want the cursor showing, we can switch it off. And then finally, back on this side, we can choose whether we want to boot from the onboard NAN, whether we want to boot from the Ethernet, or we want to boot from the SD card. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got the watchdog, and as you can see from the drop-down box, you can set how many seconds you want the device to wait before the watchdog's strode.
Okay, that should give you an idea just how flexible the RE2 is. So as you can see, I've now killed the, the uh, configurator utility, and I'll switch the board off and then back on again. And to prove that the RE2 has now taken all that information and passed it over to the operating system, so the operating system will now know it's actually working on a 1360 by 768 display, and it will resize re its uh, desktop accordingly. There you go. You see it come up on the screen. You can see that it's also just done an active sync over to my laptop because the uh, USB connection is still present, and it looks remarkably similar to uh, a desktop PC.